गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून यस आई डॉक्टर प्रदीप शर्मा फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग या 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 गुड आफ्टरनून वेरी मच या करेक्टली घर सर विल जॉइन यू शॉर्टली एंड सर आई थिंक वी विल हैव टू वेट फॉर मैक्सिमम 5 मिनट्स सो दैट पार्टिसिपेंट कैन जॉइन या या इट्स स्टिल 5 मिनट्स टू गो जस्ट आई एम चेकिंग राइट सो ओके या या सर प्लीज थैंक यू सर ओके
very good afternoon to all welcome back in the next session of the fourth day i am delighted and privileged to introduce our next speaker professor kasim murtaza a visionary and a dynamic personality professor murtaza is a professor <coughs> in the department of mechanical engineering delhi technological university delhi it's a honor to have you sir in our atal faculty development program on the behalf of department of mechanical engineering deen bandhu chotu ram university of science and technology i welcome you sir and thank you for being a part of this faculty development program dr kasim murtaza is a professor in the department of mechanical engineering since <clears throat> in dtu since 2009 sir completed his phd in 2006 from dublin ireland and after that post doctorate fellowships from manchester <clears throat> now sir is working on in the area of 3d printing thermal spray coating materials and industrial engineering sir has a total experience of 21 years in the fields of teaching <clears throat> professor murtaza have more than 3 years of teaching uh, teaching assistance from 2003 to 2006 in the dublin university dublin ireland and 6 year of teaching experience as a lecturer in the mechanical engineering department aligarh aligarh muslim university aligarh sir is working right uh, presently sir is working on a project to optimize the new manufacturing method metal therm uh, thermal spray for the productions of automatic industry in collaborations with alpha tech bentley motors at manchester metropolitan university manchester uk professor kasim murtaza has got a research best research paper awards from elsewhere emerald springer publications house he has also a recipient of an excellent research award from delhi technological university since its inception thank you sir for being a part of this faculty development program we are grateful to you sir for being a expert speaker in our atal faculty development program we welcome thank you sir thank you sir so over to you sir thanks <clears throat> thank you very much for a long uh, introduction thanks a lot um, okay so let's see start it with uh, yes sir so how can i share is share the screen okay so first of all i share it that's there today's topic and i hope it's pop up there yes sir it's, it's visible to us perfect so i just also on the pen if i need to write it down so thank you very much uh, again dr pradeep um i'm delighted for uh, this uh, long introduction for me so let us today we'll talk about uh, uh, 3d design of anchor for torsos or afo and a concept of additive manufacturing through thermal spray uh, processes so uh, today we will uh, look at or uh, we will talk about uh, just like uh, afo right or uh, different type of processes how we are manufacturing presently in india and around the world and uh, how we can distinguish between the conventional method as well as our uh, non conventional method at the same time what design criteria should be taken through manufacturing of ankle foot orthoses and because this is additive manufacturing so how we uh, use it ankle foot orthoses this 3d technique and how to enhance its mechanical properties are there uh, with a vis a vis we will look at also thermal spray process how we can use it for additive manufacturing so Uh, when we know uh, just we started you are uh, getting many lectures about additive manufacturing so we just started with the basic then we describe it then we will talk about afo and then the design manufacturing how to do analyze the manufactured afo or a case study of it and then uh, thermal spray processes how it is used for our additive manufacturing so when we look at uh, additive manufacturing in nature we know just look around 
we have seen a number of additive manufacturing concept by the nature is given and there is a small example of our seed which become as a big tree is there so if you look at in our uh, you can say development house construction process since a long time right in a medieval or you go back in bc whenever uh, you can look at in the history there houses are there and these houses were constructed based on our additive manufacturing concept just like this example is there with the foundation so what is the concept of additive manufacturing minimum waste multi dimensional you can say uh, functionality of the material can be used just like here the column is there window is there right uh, wooden stuff is there so there is no wastage is there and we are getting different functional property of the material along with that similarly when we look at for a subtractive manufacturing right here <clears throat> uh, in a subtractive manufacturing again when we go through in the nature right uh, we have seen rivers are there right how they are made is with a simple erosion technique is there right with a simple way by which uh, water flowing over the sand even on the uh, you can say plains or in uh, mountains right or what we started the river started from a mountain tributary then to become a river then plain then it will move to a uh, delta or basin so how the you can say the erosion is taking place so unwanted material or the material is removed which will cause some uh, functionality in the in the concept so here means it is a you can say a, some a channel is formed so water can flow from it if you look at again with the subtractive because when we are talking about manufacturing so formative subtractive additives are there in all means the first two we have to look at uh, here so there are number of you can say subtractive manufacturing uh, process sorry uh, there is call is there so i just need a pocket to mute it okay so formative formative subtractive these techniques are there where we do our uh, subtractive manufacturing but when we are talking about additive manufacturing you will see uh, a layer by layer we are add on and build up our concept so either the house is there right or you look at by the nature is there or in our industry when we are talking about so additive manufacturing layer by layer so if we compare these two part one is a subtractive manufacturing second is additive in which uh, subtractive manufacturing we have a milling turning grinding water jet whatever we have learned in our uh, conventional manufacturing concept but when we are talking about additive manufacturing it is either the layer or the powder it will become a layer and then layers are built up to make a 3d shape so the standard definition as you have learned already what you see is what you build the this process is there and that is a uh, make a difference between a rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing whereas in a rapid prototyping all type of you can say uh, method can be used to make a prototype but uh, in most of the cases if you look at in rapid prototyping we are using additive manufacturing technique nowadays because to make up component to make up product just like this so i want to make it this one right so it is as soon as possible i want to make it so look at test it so that is a first product is there so that is a rapid prototyping but additive manufacturing in which we are using different techniques means by the way to build up layer by layer and to make a component maybe it is for a single piece maybe it is for a some uh, numbers are there or maybe it is a continuous production is there so there is uh, no limit of the components are there but as we look at there is only one component it is in it and if you look at basic steps right where we have a 3d after scanning we make a 3d model convert into a stl file then we make it in, into a small slice make it it's a codes g codes or property codes command codes are there which is transformed to machine and they do printing in x y z right so if it is 
z is there right this is let us say x and y so here in the form of the z it work in x y direction to make it as a layer by layer so whatever the standard definition presently which fulfill it at the same time how we go through it through our you know a z axis or maybe x or y axis in the form of codes are there so this is about a uh, very brief just what do you mean by uh, additive manufacturing and when we use it so with this concept either any process qualify for the additive manufacturing or not so <clears throat> now back to our topic the orthoses are there so most commonly orth orthoses why it is required means those which uh, people are disabled due to nervous system issues are there or uh, muscular disorders are there maybe they are the temporary maybe they are the permanent so they need some sort of the support so that mobility can enhance or they will become as a uh, as a common person so orthosis if you look at the object is that means uniformity to correct the uniformity is there to support or assist the movement of joint toward the patient gait cycle means the walking cycle is there to relieve or distribute distal support process uh, during the walking or a forces plantar forces distribution should be uniform and to protect from external exciters are there in the last it will uh, a person can walk or a patient can walk with a maximum mobility as a normal person so we will look at here the basic objectives are there so it should be qualifier means when we are talking about additive manufacturing it does not mean that we will make it it looks like no nowadays means the additive manufacturing means it has qualified the two part one is my material and second is my functionality if it is qualified then we can go for our production otherwise maybe it will become a toy maybe it is good to analyze maybe to look or to view or to feel aesthetic of the material or the shape is there but for additive manufacturing at least this should be there and for the orthoses if we look at in 2020 data is there about 7.3 million right in the united state they are because their data is there and they are updated continuously so that is why i have taken this and uh, when we compare with uh, other countries so we can't expect it but it is much much more than that especially war torn countries are there just like you know middle east countries afghanistan there you know the bomb accident are very common phenomena during war so mostly the accident was happened uh, to uh, you know the leg foot or hand so they may damage so a large you can say the population needs to it to retain its mobility and they should work as a as a basic human or it's a complete or normal human is there so if you look at in the history of the prothesis right or orthosis combined to up to the leg since in a 1800 right from a wood leather then a leather wood is steel right then we have a plastic start there so there is a continuous development in the material is also there with the constructed so if you look at in the history right about a 3000 bc right where in a egyptian period they are using splints right which is made up of wood and they are surrounded the bone so this is the bone is there right this is bone if you look at and this is a wooden splint are there and they are tied with some you know rope is there to support it so if you look at in the history the people are using then if you go just uh, before or you can say after the development in this about of 500 bc right around so there is a splint fractures or tiber is there right and there are leather pads are also there so that is a uh, wood as well as the leather they are used to support it to uh, you can say fix the fracture and to help in the walking whereas further we moved in history right so about a 500 to 1500 ad right that what we call a medieval period is there is plain to the plaster mold are used or they were used 
during that time to treat a fracture bones are there and the plaster was made up of flour and egg whites are there so that is a calcium is there and which will give the strength or support or you can say uh, with the help of the flour is there maybe it is a wheat or maybe any other so the continuous development is going on and nowadays we will look at uh, all the options are available with the different materials and a huge development is going on so if we can classify right here that is a long classification is there so we pick up right let us say above knee is there above elbow below knee below elbow in the lower limb right we just talk about this foot orthosis is there uh, what we called it it is the ankle foot orthosis right in which you will look at the design material and manufacturing through conventional as well as 3d manufacturing is there so huge classification is there right so where we use it this ankle foot orthosis or efo those patient which have drop foot right drop foot condition it may be due to diabetic it due to uh, maybe a nerve damage maybe paralysis maybe stroke maybe a severe heart attack then there is a issues are there or uh, there may be a par paralysis parkinson issues are there so so many uh, issues or uh, you can say uh, causes the drop drop foot in the patient and to need to correct this drop foot we need some sort of external support so how better external support how fast we provide better uh, you can say the support to it it will increase or improve the performance and uh, back to a gait cycle as a normal human being so the major issue a neuromuscular disorder is there right which is the main causes and what we look at are uh, dorsiflexion and the plantar flexion actions are there as well as the swing to control it with the external support so what are they so that is uh, let us say the normal foot is there right it can move upward direction as well as it move downward direction but when we are talking about uh, you can say drop foot is there so instead of lifting upward right due to the muscle a signal it doesn't it falls down so that is uh, you can say either the dorsiflexion right upward direction or downward direction which is a plantar or a sole direction so this is plantar this is my you can say the dorsif so this two part we will look at and how it is corrected with the so it will become a functional product made by additive manufacturing or the conventional system so flexion when we are talking about that is a sole right so this one is a plantar foot and on this side when we look at it is a dorsal side is there right so if you make it angle right here one angle like this and second let us say if it is down like this then what is the angle of this which will become a plantar one right and this angle is become a dorsal one so here it is seen right dorsiflexion angle is there so between this and between this similarly when we look at plantar flexion action is there so when we when a patient or when a person down their foot so this will make the with the axis is there so this will become a plantar flexion so dorsiflexion this angle is there plantar flexion this angle is there and in a drop foot what is happening means it is not controlled as per the signal coming from the muscles is there so this is the muscles bone which will provide the support right but for the motion or you can say a, a motor function which is governed by the nerve signals are there to muscle provide by the bone also especially muscle to support it and the signal if it is disturbed then as per requirement of the movement during walking it is not there so external support is provided in such a way to improve gait cycle so what what is uh, you can say the normal gait cycle is there 
it has a two parties there. One is the instant phase and second is the swing phase. And the stand phase is about 60%, whereas the swing phase is about 40% is there. How it can be uh, divided means initial contact, right? Load, initial is there, right? This is a initial. Then there is a load is there. Then complete load comes with what we call it. It is a mid stent is there. Then, right, it is a terminal stent. So it moved. So now if you look at my, this, the foot, it move up, place perfect horizontal, then it up down. So what we just said right now, it is a planter as well as our dorsiflexion angles, how they are correlated during the walking is there. Then we have a swing actions are there, initial swing, mid swing, and terminal swing is there, which can be uh, recorded in our analysis through uh, softwares are there, or you know, software is there, which is used. So instant phase is there, right? Heel touches down, then flat, then heel up, and heel up to maximum for the swing action is there, or pre-swing is started. Similarly, for this stand, there is a swing action is there. Swing is initially swing, now foot it is in the air, now it will take mid-swing, so movement is there, right? And then there's a terminal swing where it, so again, you can say a heel is touches the floor. So toe up, whereas heel here touches. So this is a swing phase is there. How we do analyze this gait cycle? Gait cycle, what we talk about this, right? This is a stand phase and this is a swing phase. So a person can walk. And this can be analyzed through two methods are there most commonly. Kinematics are there and kinetics. So kinematics means uh, with the visual gate analysis and we do the angles can be measured, point can be there. On the other hand, the kinetics, we find it out the reaction forces are there. It can be calculated either through uh, EMG or the direct forces can be measured and look into it. How we can, uh, you can say, uh, support this orthosis, maybe it is a three point, right? This one, or maybe it is a four point reaction to maintain the pressure or to maintain a balance of the forces for the motion is there. And this can be seen here, right? Which is our dorsiflexion that is downward to the plantar fraction. This is a three point, right? It is there. This is again a three point, right? In a dorsiflexion position. This is for the plantar flexion position, right? That is three point is there. And either we can provide the, or you can for the analysis biomechanics with a three point or the four point analysis. Now design, if you look at of AFO, means it is a metal bar is there with a shoe. Now you can just think it about how much uh, you can say the load is there. Then that is a total contact means each part it is contact with the foot. And this is, you can say the flexi, this is, uh, you can say immobilizing, means it required uh, support as well as external support is required through some external, you can say agency also because 100% immobilization is there. Whereas this is a weightless means it is made up of cotton or fiber or textile one, just to a small support to the muscles are there, especially when a pressure drops and like these issues are there. So we are looking like this type of there, right? Because it is quite fit, quite customized. And at the same time, it should be designed for the proper, you can say, support the biomechanics of it. And here, if you look at the materials are there, right? Materials, wood, metal and leather, plastic and carbon fiber composites are there. Just if you think about, let us say we are using all right chapels and uh, shoes are there, sports shoes are there. If there is a little a gap inside it or if it is unfit, how uncomfort is there? how it is uneasy to walk or run. And similarly, right, even 
our shoes, they are ultra modern, ultra designs they have. Instead of that, it's in the human nature, right? It seems it looks perfectly same, but when we measure, right, at a microscopic level, we can't find two parts is equivalent to be same, or it's almost equal to each other. Just like my two hands are there, if we really measure their dimensions, no, they are not perfectly same. Similarly, all our uh, foot is there, they are not same. Left, right, maybe there's a little bit difference. So even the same shoe we wear, right, maybe at left, little bit tight, at right, maybe little bit, it's uh, loose. So these conditions are there. And there's a little, you know, unfit is there. What happening? During running, there's a rubbing is there, then the burning is there, tearing, right? So skin may be damaged, right? So many issues are there. And you know, if a skin a little bit damaged, then it may take a week or a month to recover it. So walking means it is a continuous one. On the other hand, when there is AFO is there, it should be supporting also. Means there is a force reaction is coming on either on the plantar, dorsi, or calf muscles are there. So it should be properly designed. It should be a properly fit to the customer. And you know, every customer is different. Until unless we will take it the exact shape, then we make it, then we can go that, okay, we give a best fit. It is the best you can say in terms of performance when, it, when the patient is used, uh, when the patient uses it. So most commonly two methods are used. One is a conventional method and second may be additive manufacturing is there. So it's still in India, right? Uh, Jaipur Foot Industry is there, which is one of the India world largest uh, orthoses and you can say processes company is there providing all type of materials, uh, foot and other parts are there, artificial uh, uh, hand and limbs they are providing. So it's still right. They are using wood materials, they are using leather materials, and uh, maybe the conventional casting. And uh, each component or a product takes a long time. It is not uh, within a two days or three days. Maybe it is a month requires to get the. So that is another issue is there. So when we design this type of material, what we are looking at, we have to look at a specific strength, right? Of different material and a specific stiffness. So a specific strength means the strength upon density, right? So strength upon density, right? And similarly, a stiffness, if we have taken a stiffness upon density we have taken, and that is a specific stiffness. So we can compare it with different materials with their masses are there. And if we look at, right, and this, the composite is the best one compared to it. Composite is the best one, again, in the stiffness based on materials, which are plastic, metal, wood is there. Why we require a uh, design any uh, component or this product design for strength, design for stiffness. So let us say if we have a foot is there and this is my foot, right? So this is my support is there. So it should, shouldn't should deform, right? If deform more than what we are expecting, the, then it means it is not supporting fully. So stiffness is mostly required. Similarly, the strength because the load is coming here means whatever the 60 kg, or a 50 kg is there, so it should also support. So the strength is also important. The two parameters should be taken into account, the specific strength as well as the specific stiffness of the material on which our product is designed. So design criteria is design for strength, design for stiffness. Now, if you look at these are biomaterials, right, used uh, for a 3D additive manufacturing is there. We have most commonly uh, PLA is there, right? Polylactic acid most commonly is used. Why? Because they are compatible with the human, uh, human skin. It is also soft. It is uh, non-toxic, right? So they are the uh, major concern 
when we are designing or selecting a material because uh, skin rubs, there's a sweat is there, and uh, you know there is a pressure is also there. I Means that skin puts a pressure on our orthoses. So these three parameters should be taken into account. And for biomaterials, most commonly used for this AFO, they are of PLA, ABS, polymers are there. So if we look at most commonly right, they are used. And we did also in one set of the experiment, we developed AFO by PLA through additive manufacturing, as well as with the conventional manufacturing, then compare it. After that, we enhance the PLA with some, uh, you can say, other reinforced material for additive manufacturing to look at how much we improve for strength as well as for uh, stiffness is there. And if you look at their traditional and additive manufacturing concept of AFO, how many steps are there by which we can recognize how much time actually is taken to make it. So in a traditional manufacturing patient visit, plaster casting, make a negative of that, then close the negative, make the positive, crack and finish, laminate positive because to get the shape of uh, AFO, then cut from the positive and give the finishing. So it is a long procedure, right? So casting is there, one casting, two casting, then the third lamination process is there and curing time is there. So more than, you know, to make it this minimum, two weeks are there, right? And as I said, in a Jaipur, this industry, it may takes about a month or two months. On the other hand, when we go for the additive manufacturing, scan the body part, right? And design the orthotic device production, right? Cleaning. All you can say the additive manufacturing process time taken by uh, AFO is about 24 hours to 36 hours are there. So you can say that compare with the time and you know, time is the money, time, especially for the patient, even time is not the money, time is the life. So how much a difference between these two and at the same time, there is highly, you can say, compatible, highly fit to the, to the uh, patient and their performance is also much, much better than this one. So if you go for, uh, you can say traditional manufacturing, then what we did, some mechanical tests are there to ensure it fulfills the design criteria for strength and stiffness are there, as well as also check the gait cycle are there as a case study to ensure means how our product is fit to the patient. So this testing of the AFO can be done through our uh, Innova software, through gate analysis, and we did also EMG, right? Electromyography to find it out which muscles are active and how much they are improved with the, uh, you can say providing the AFO is there. So for a traditional one, right? What we did it, polypropylene is there, carbon fibers are there, just try to make it the best, right? Through our uh, conventional method is there. Then laminate process is used, curing is there, heating, right? And after, you know, we have taken the uh, negative, then uh, let us say if we make it negative, then it will become a positive after that. Then we fill it, right? Then we uh, use it to laminate your hair. And after that, we go for, you can say vacuum it to take the shape as of this ankle and foot is there. So this uh, was a student actually did from uh, work in India, from Iraq, because as I said, there are many issues with this, uh, these uh, Middle East countries after the war. So this, he developed it, right? Now he take it out from there. And the step, if you look at here, right? The final step, we will 
get it either lamination or through our composite one right and in the last we are getting the efo is there maybe it is made up of a uh, carbon fiber is there that is one example here we look at uh, through our traditional method is there now look at our additive manufacturing because you know the conventional method as well as the additive manufacturing manufacturing we have learned very simple but what are the issues are there and what we uh, you can say the layout or a process layout followed to get it the best right and what are the uh, technique we will use to qualify our product for uh, use because uh, here we need also to qualify according to a uh, few uh, medical science uh, testing is there so scanning is one of the important part what type of scanning you will do the issues are there may you will learn from uh, other faculties or experts are there then cat design how we can transform it what are the errors in it how we can patch it how we can stitch it and how accurate uh, we can get the profile right so interpolations are there different interpolation we use if there is some area is unmatched or untouched is there so we have to prepare complete cat model once it is we develop the cat model then we make it slices we will mash it make it as a element then go for biomechanical analysis as well as the stress analysis on our ankle foot orthosis so it may be through software again either the ansys or any other at ls dinosaur software we can use it and do the analysis so we ensure ourselves that it should be perfect for design for strength as well as stiffness right so both means sigma and delta we will look at to check it out either it is there so based on that what should be the thickness of our let us say this afo what are the shape of the afo let us say if it is a plane maybe it is a you can say some pattern we will make it uh, let us say this pattern we can make it maybe it is a honeycomb or hexagonal structure we can or like this we can so we can uh, look at in the software and do the analysis with different you can say shape factors the material volume to ensure that it should sustain whatever my forces are coming from here coming from here as we have seen in our uh, biomechanics of three point minimum or four point is there then generate the code and pass on here to make it so our material mostly it is a, a polymers are there which further in, enforce or enhance with uh, some uh, reinforced particles are there so the best you can say the technology here using for additive manufacturing is fdm right a uh, few people also use uh, laser selective sintering where they are using uh, mostly very rich carbon fibers are there and then we go for a layer by layer why we adopt this uh, am technique right to make it this in this uh, you can say industry or medical science industry customization which is very perfect right complexity any type of complexity especially our you can say the sole or uh, you can say the upper part of our foot as well as the uh, uh, knee area is there sorry uh, not the knee the ankle area is there which is again uh, more complex so we have taken only up to the uh, up to the calf muscle is there so lead time as we have seen the cost it is really cheap compared to that why because all uh, the process where material is not wasted in a conventional method a large material is wasted right we first will make it negative then make it uh, positive then fill it then after that so all that these steps are there even we are using a simple plaster of paris or all that so materials they are actually wasted and then we do curing and all so compare with that it is cheaper for a longer duration for uh, continuous use of this multi material print can be possible right and 
it is biocompatible and it sterilizes also compared to that. So scanning issues are there. Uh, here, uh, if, if we classify a uh, scanning method, very simple, either the one, it is a contact one, and second is a non-contact. So contact means just like a tactile, you can say sensors are used to measure the dimensions. Very simple is my uh, CMM machine, right? right? And this coordinate measuring uh, machine is used for, uh, you can say the mechanical component where we require accuracy up to uh, one micrometer, right? Let us say in my case, in my product, there is no requirement of uh, accuracy up to one micrometer. Maybe 100 micrometer is enough, maybe 0.1 mm, even one mm, right? Uh, can be enough. So in non-contact, we have the two active and passive. Active time of flight, triangulation method, and structured light. So they are uh, simultaneously measure the distance, get the pattern, and develop it. Whereas in a passive type, just like as an eye, take the image and then process it. After that, we do, we can play. So they are the different methods. So here we have seen, we have just used a structured light, means monochromatic uh, of a standard frequency. We are using it, and then we can get the uh, shape of it. So that is a projector is there, two cameras are used, right? And with this uh, working principle, we take the surface measurement and draw the surfaces there. And this is used in the lab where this is, uh, we can say range vision smart camera and scanner is there. It is, uh, you can say first we do calibrate it up to how much? It is uh, accuracy 0.2 mm, right? 0.1 mm, 0.1 mm in our, you can say X, Y, Z, uh, 3D point accuracy is there, right? And 3D resolution is 0.4. So 0.5, you can say accuracy, we will get it with this camera, right? First, after calibration from it, let us say this is ahead of Meta Queen, we use it, and then we go for our, uh, you can say, uh, foot ankle is there. And once we will uh, get the uh, point data is there or cloud data from there, then we will, uh, you can say, fix it and get the shape of our, uh, you can say, uh, foot ankle is there. And this is used Autodesk Mesh Mixer where uh, to get it for uh, mashing, right? And convert it into STL file. So here, uh, one we have seen this figure, it is a hexagonal hollow structure are made here, which is mesh for the analyzing, right? Here we use our Autodesk Inventor Professional for this purpose. And once we will get it this, then what we do, we apply the load here, apply the load here, let us say, and look at means how it is banned, right? Or let us say here, deform is there under the load. And this is maybe the delta right? deformation, where the strength we have also taken here, just to look at how the stress is distributed over this part, right? As well as this part, so that uh, we can decide the thickness of this one, right? This is my thickness is there it can be optimized also in the process. How we can improve the, you can say, AM material to make it this EFO. Here we did through composite material, means uh, here PLA plus carbon fibers are there. We add it, right, and use it in AM technique with a very simple, you can say, procedure. As we know, just uh, this, uh, what I would like to hear means the two things is there, the material, when we process it, right? We enhance the mechanical properties, alter the mechanical properties that lead to the performance is there, right? So it can further improve when we do the processing with more than two materials are there, that what we call hybrid or composite materials are there. Example here, if you look at, let us say a glass is there. 
and crystal or amorphous metal is there it is again we developed as a glass metal right a metal right is used or process in such a way it will become as a glass or it is a opaque is there similarly ceramic can also be used means aluminum oxide right can be used as a full opaque right to full transplant or transparent right transparent so this can be used right of this material only issue is that we are using different type of processing ways are there so to alter its a mechanical property and definitely to improve its performance so uh, here what we did uh, in the test my one my phd scholar so he used a pla polylactic acid with different fibers are there and then it uh, he made it the material for additive manufacturing of filament so that it can be used as directly am technique he used it with a simple you can say extruder is there right where he took a pla right pellets are there carbon fiber which mixed right then extrusion process right, after blending and filament is there and this filament right after curing it is used in 3d printer right where we developed afo through composite materials are there to improve to nas mechanical properties are there similarly he used ansys 18.2 software to uh, go for the analysis right and find it out the stress distribution pressure force torque all these parameters are there and if you look at here i am just representing this one and this area actually the load is there right and this is the calf muscle which initiate the energy right for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion action is there so to validate or to qualify my product this for the afo as in the patient we have to check it out this part are there so this is a pla afo and plus a cf or carbon fiber that was made through em technique right after making this and with the help of that we did also this a tensile fracture other standard specimen to make it the material to compare different properties of our conventional material then uh, improve materials are there right with a different percentage of it just to generate data uh, to get it the optimum material so that optimum you can say result in term of design for strength and design for stiffness when we did analysis through software are there as well as tested so all together what is the you can say the sole purpose is that to improve the gait cycle with a minimum weight with the best design is there so propylene perlon composite materials polylactic acid these are used there and with the different uh, test we three point three point band test is used right then a flexure test is used then here they are using you can say transverse loading for the bending right bending is used here right how much it is bent with the load or the you can say it is equivalent to the calf muscle load is coming on here and we did same in the software to compare it to analyze it so that we uh, we did optimize in the software before transforming data to 3d printing machine is there and here 3d printing we are using simply this fdm is most favorable used for pla plus carbon fiber composite is there and the load applied after that right after this analysis uh, analyzed and manufactured then we have to check it out for the gate performance as we said by the two process we have to do it number one which is my uh, you can say uh, kinetics is there and kinematics is there so either the motion angles are there through a gate cycle analysis second we have to measure it uh, electromyography or or uh, emg activities along the muscles so that it can uh, give us how much 
our support, external support helps to improve the gait cycle is there. So how we measure uh, uh, as a case study here, a patient is there, we have to measure the, uh, you can say the AMG. So the basically the how the AMG is measured, let us say this is my hand is there, right? So, so let us say, so here, if I want this muscles involved some activity, mostly this type of activity is done in a sports industries that are there. So let us say here electrodes are placed here and one may be put here as a ground. So maybe the two electrodes and one ground is used right here so that the activity uh, means why the ground is there means a signal is, let us say, it which is coming here already, that is of ground. And this actually the signal which is causes the, uh, you can say the muscle activity. And after that, what we, uh, we will look at uh, how the fatigue occurred in the muscles is there. So it can be seen here, let us say, I'm just uh, draw the EMG activity. So this is my gripping force. Let us, I'm just uh, explaining with a standard example is there. So grip, if I have pressed it, so what will happen? If I am pressing it, I am applying force is there or grip force is there. So grip force is, is started increasing, right? And this is moving continuously increases. After some time, right? If I am holding it, and it is decreasing. That is called fatigue is started. I'm not talking in detail in a, a biological term, means ATP is there, which is a magnesium, sodium, and all these are there. So we are just retain ourselves up to a mechanical term is there. So this is my gripping force, right? It increases, I excuse it, right? I hold it and this, but after some time, it is decreasing. Whereas, uh, if you look at the EMG pattern is there before here EMG to start here have activity is there then we are getting here and from here right it is starting more so what it means is this EMG or millivolt you can say activity is increases but the output in term of force is reduces so what do you mean by that there is a fatigue is there Whatever we are giving input, we are not getting as output. It is lost somewhere. So that is lost means which is a fatigue is there. So we can measure the fatigue. We can do all the analysis are there. But here we are restricted ourselves how to improve gait cycle and how we use to it to measure it. So different type of AFOs are there, right? Uh, polypropylene, carbon fiber is there, PLA then PLA with different carbon fibers are there, right? How to uh, record the gait cycle and do the analysis with a Kinova software is there. That is, so it actually, uh, you, you can say kinematics, which is measured here, right? And this can be by measuring the angles. With the help of that, we can find it out how much it is improved in our plantar and dorsiflexion angles are there. So that is a standard test is there, two meter, three meter walk is there. And uh, analysis is recorded right through camera and using this uh, recorded picture with the uh, uh, software, right? It measured the angle right here and give the analysis part of our, this one. So this will, uh, uh, here it has shown, right? It is six degree, let us say, angle is there between the key uh, knee marker, that is a fixed point, ankle marker, which is a fixed point, and this is a toe marker, which varied, right? When we are moving or walking is here. What uh, muscles are involved here, which we have to look at, there are two major muscles are there. One, which is a tibialis, interior is there. Second is a gastrominus this so they are the that is the top that is at the bottom uh, back they are the two muscles which give and similarly in a sports industry they isolate the muscle which muscle actually involved of which motion so that that muscle should be trained so athlete should be uh, perfect with that particular activity and train their muscle 
so their fatigue is minimized if it is stronger and stronger is there so here what we did uh, using a, let us say a normal person and a patient using with the uh, you can say uh, this efo and measure the emg's activity as well as a uh, you can say gait cycles are there so this is uh, it is more clearly shown right that is at the back gastrocnemius uh, and tibialis anterior which is shown at the top of our this mean so these two muscles actually this is for a plantar and dorsiflexion angles which are measured or controlled through these two muscles we are signal is coming it so uh, we just uh, did it with a either we measure the forces also as well as our sensors used to measure the emg is there so in this uh, simple uh, lab defined experiment is there attach it right normal walking is there and you have seen the re recording of emg activities are there right so with a different you can say uh, gait cycle classification or division what we saw means uh, it is a stent is there and a swing is there and in a stent and a swing different steps are there which can be identify here and look at their energy how much it is used similarly when a person is walk uh, in the previous slide here the person up stairs is there and you will see compare with the same scale how much activities are there right so huge you can say so this emg right it is uh, noise is there we have to uh, reduce the noise why the noise is there we are using a sensors are there the sensors they are and uh, what they are measuring they are measuring the millivolt is there right due to muscle activities there which is as a output so means light is there right other uh, emotional actions are there then we have other factor like uh, somebody is wearing something right so all these and other muscles you can say uh, millivolt or uh, activity comes on that point is there so the output right let us say if i am talking about uh, pulse output is there so there may be of this amount of noise is there so all this can be removed and this is a two way is there right so two way is there and in the last we can remove the noise and make it as a uh, let us say half path is there so we can find it out the area and know about how much energy is used during this and most commonly what we are using normalize rms why because after reducing from a uh, me uh, minimum as well as maximum is there so normalize rms is used to uh, get the analysis is there just like here we have taken in the half pass cycle is there and this half pass cycle if you look at you see the energy used are there the amplitude of our millivolt can be seen here so here it is a stair climbing right a and b and which have for patient wearing cfo with a back pack load of 10 kg so patient with wearing c uh, carbon fiber afo backpack load of 10 kg right so how much it is there then it will take it into this will show uh, we can compare it with the cfo or sorry uh, afo carbon fiber or any afo is there how much it is improved our this uh, how much support is provided by this so we did this analysis right and then in the form of tabulated so it can be more clear and more easy we can visualize it so normal right so this is there right and when a drop foot uh, sorry uh, this is normal one right a smaller drop foot is as a large so for a gait cycle the energy required for a drop foot patient is more if it is supported externally then this amount of energy is reduced back to it, this right so pla right now you will look at let us say with a with this and we reduce it right from here this is barefoot drop foot 
So if we are walking with a different pack load is there at the back, 0, 5, 10, 25 kg. So what we have uh, drawn here means drop foot require more energy for walking or for steering, right? And this is a specific activity interior during gait cycle. So we have identified it, put the uh, sensors there. Similarly, uh, gastrominus, uh, we have taken it. And here you have seen all uh, drop foot, bare foot is there. When we used PLA, right? Uh, PLA, especially, uh, let us say, with a, a carbon fiber composite, with a higher strength and higher, you can say, stiff, the EMG required for this is less. Even it is, this is normal one. So we are not able to get the normal, but with the support of EFO, we can prove that it is near to normal. So if we compare it this way, there is a small amount is an asterisk required in all the cases, right? So this is there, right? So normal person is there. It is perfectly all right. And the task is that how we can improve it. And here it can be seen in this figure is there. Similarly, for uh, you can say stair climbing is there with a different load is there. So different condition, one is a walking, then a climbing, then with a different pack load is there. And in most of the cases, if you compare, normal has a minimum, you can say energy expenditure is there, but when we are using PLA, EFO, customized design, it, we reduce the requirement of energy by the muscle and almost near to a normal one. So that is clearly demonstrated here. Similarly, uh, gastrovenous uh, muscle is there. So two muscles, two different conditions. So four uh, paragraphs uh, are there. And it can be recorded. It can be converted into, let, let us say, uh, this is a kinematics is there, ankle defection during gait cycle and ankle ankle angles are there with the, uh, you can say drop foot is much, much improved when it is using with a PLA EFO. So at the top right, we have this one, a barefoot drop foot, and this one is uh, when we are using, right? Barefoot normal, right? So this one, right? So it is different in the difference angle a different one, but when we put it a PLAF, uh, just if I am drawing like this, so the angle of this, uh, this is a barefoot drop and for the normal, this one. If we add it with a, uh, let us say PLAFO, customized one, this is normal, right? And this is a drop foot and with this, we have observed this, it is not very much clear. So from here, we can say this is for AFO condition is there. And similarly did analysis for safety of factor, total deformation, equivalent stress in this one. And we have shown that we can optimize it, the different carbon fiber composite there. And in the result, it can be seen here now, let us say PLA with 2.5 weight percent carbon fiber, Thickness is almost same we have taken and the tensile, right? That is a 37. If you look at it, it is a maximum. Then a ultimate, it is again maximum. And young models, we have increased a bit higher side. Then a flexure strength is also high. Flexure strength is 3.1. So if you look at all the parameters, they are increases with this. So design for, just remember in the first, what we said, design for strength and design for stiffness. So again, uh, maximum deformation right here, it is minimum one compared to this one also, right? With the factor safety of there, so forget about this. Even when we did the uh, hammer test on the calf region or to how much energy is absorbed, right, externally. If you look at, this is the minimum PLAFO, similarly PLAFO is minimum in the both the cases. So this is a total chart is there. With the help of that, we can use it. We can optimize this for additive manufacturing, which is a functional additive manufactured product, right? 
can be made. So that is a complete case study with the analysis is there. Now we can move on on our second part, what we said, the concept of uh, uh, 3D manufacturing through thermal spec process. The thermal spec process may be classified into two parts. Here you have seen the thermal spray process and cold spray process is there. How we can use it for additive manufacturing uh, purposes there. So in a very simply means thermal spray process, we have a gas, energy, and a material which is mixed together. After mixing with a high velocity, it is uh, striking on the on the substrate is there, right? So it uh, impeach or you can say it uh, adds on the surface is there. Now, if you look at uh, the different uh, particle morphologies are there, that is one is my cake structure is there and second is flower like. These two shows how much kinetic energy bears by this particle before striking. It means it has a less energy, it has a more energy, so that mode is spread on the substrate. So we have to look at either we require a dense type of coating or dense type of um, to build up the material, right? This is one layer is formed. We put another layer, we put another layer, then we will get a certain thickness of it. And this may put it another one, so chances of porosity is developed. So depend upon requirement, just like in a, a centering, either we required a self-lubricated bearings are there or a porous bearings are there or a complete or dense uh, parts are there. So thermal spray coating here, we look at conventional flame spray, electric arc, wire spray and plasma spray. We will look at uh, HVF also, what are, uh, Protect can be made through with the concept of additive manufacturing in the short. So um, the process parameter of this uh, process, it is a particle velocity and a flame temperature or you can say particle temperature of it. So the whereas uh, uh, gas, right? In this case, here, what we have seen, maximum kinetic energy is there, but the uh, temperature of the particle is minimum. So that is the range is there. Other processes, let us say, high velocity oxy fuel system, wire arc spray system, they are at different position aligned. So plasma, just we know it will become a plasma is formed, how it is formed, argon, hydrogen gas, water, to cool it down, and there's a powder. So plasma channel is formed and powder comes in. So it has very high temperatures there, and then it is substrate over there. We have seen a spray flame is there. What we are talking about additive manufacturing, if you remember the first standard definition means uh, we are layer by layer. So the layer does not mean that what, what is the thickness of it. Either it is in a micrometer, maybe it is in millimeter, maybe, uh, maybe it is just like a brick of in centimeters are there. So this can be used to make it as a component. So here, what we did again, it's a one a case of a medical history. Uh, that is a calcium hydroxide plus a phosphoric acid. And we are getting this, what we call it HA, hydroxyapatite, which is equal to human bone is there, right? So this is used, the powder is produced, right? Through a spray process or optimization process, which should be a sphere that is a required uh, requirement or the condition to spray properly. Thermal spray powders are there. And they spread through the plasma, right? Where? On this implant. There, there are the uh, hip implants are there, right? Where a femur break down and then they put it just to uh, repair that or replace the upper part of it. So this part, right? can be sprayed by HA powder. The purpose is that to become as a, uh, you can say, compatibility with the human bone and improve its, uh, you can say, a particular uh, life of the implant are there. So this part, it is coated through HA, right? So coating, it is additive manufacturing in term of the layer here, if you look at. And with the help of this, the life of our you can say the implant is almost twice and thrice. So before without this coating, hardly five to seven years. After that, it will become of 15 to 20 years. 
And we assume this type of fracture mostly in the old people, right? Where if uh, somebody is 70 and put 15 or 20 years, then 85 or respectable uh, patient can attain the age without any pain. Otherwise, if using without HA, without any type of deposition here, then there is after within a five, seven year, pain starts. So no option to have again, uh, take it out. And in old age to repair and right to heal up, major issues are there. So that is one example of it. Then the second is a high velocity oxy fuel system. The advantage is that it is designed just like we have a diamond shape. And this actually amplify this wave the particle velocity up to three Mach number, whereas the temperature is there. So tungsten carbide cobalt, right? They are deposited and uh, uh, washers, right? All the cylinder can be prepared by this, even with this, uh, some, some sort of a profile curve is there. How it is developed means, let us say uh, we have a spray here, coming here, my, this is, let us say a cylindrical, solid cylindrical piece of aluminium and here tungsten carbide, cobalt, right? Spray is deposited here. It rotated, right? So it is deposited, layer is developed over there. After that, we put it in the furnace, right? We know the temperature of this, the tungsten carbide is more than 3000 degree and aluminium, right? It lose from it up to a 600 to 700 degree. Then we take it out and upper layer, which is by, uh, you can say 3D tungsten carbide cobalt cylindrical component are there just like washer. So their wear and tear is very high. So where a continuous load is coming, it can be replaced by that. So that is the second case of it. And the third as a solid bar, means with this dye is there and we uh, layer by layer, or you can say the continuously spray over this and there we are getting the isometric view of my tungsten carbide uh, tablet is made up. So it is a 3D component is there. The, the fourth case is a electric arc wire, uh, wire spray process there. So two electric eye means the, the uh, properties that it should be a good conductor, there is a, a voltage difference is there, flow of high current, right, which have break down. And uh, from here, the gas is coming up that spray over the spray over the substrate. So it is seen here. And one, uh, you can see the flow chart is made here to make a component. Uh, if you look at there, right, uh, this is a uh, spray mold, right, and which is spray with this, then uh, we do the surface processing, we do the uh, reinforce with the other materials, and after that we'll take it out the uh, that a coated part supported with the fiber or any other form of the material. So we did this testing so that, forget about this, so that is there, so that is, uh, we did the setup there, and that is here, right? So this is aluminum alloy coating, right? It is a freestanding coating is there. So this coating is there. This is a pure aluminum alloy coating produced by two wire arc spray process. If it is, you can say support by carbon fiber here, then it, we can increase the, uh, you can say the stiffness and hardness and deformation and it has a story about of this carbonate, right? So carbonate is made up of aluminum alloy, right? Which is produced by two via arc spray process. The, the target here, it is about, uh, let us say that the, uh, the conventional one, right? Of Bentley car is about a 15 kg that was produced with the support of carbon fiber, right? It is 4.5 kg with the same strength, right? Almost in term of deformation, just like we have a paint is there. So with the scratch, we can, uh, you can, you can uh, you remove it. So the property of uh, comparable with that and lightened weight, we can make it a 
I do a different design because all spray is done through this mold and this ceramic mold can be made easily with a different shape, different dimensions. Now we can go for the last part, which is our cold spray additive manufacturing is there, right? And in the cold spray additive manufacturing, uh, when we look at how much time we have, I think, uh, uh, I think how much time we have? Yes, sir. Uh, we have uh, up to 434, 45. We can. Uh, Okay, we have a 10, 20 minutes more. So, okay. So that is a cold spray, right? Additive manufacturing is there. So how we can use a cold spray as an additive man manufacturing? Again, it is a powder for a powder, which is make it a small layer. And this layer is deposited over each other, which can be used as, as a additive manufacturing near net shape or a repair or remanufacturing, or we do some sort of coatings there and coating itself, it is an additive a concept is there. Either if we look at even our walls are there, we do the paint. So there's a one layer, one coat, second coat, third coat, that's a one layer, second layer, third layer. And what we define additive manufacturing in the starting, the standard definition, layer by layer deposition is there. So it is also qualified for the additive manufacturing process by a standard definition. So here the materials, we can use it aluminum, or you can say pure materials are there. Then refractory materials can also be used. There is a, but uh, if you look at mostly the materials preferred, they have high ductility, or you can say high malleability of the orders or uh, ductility in the material there. So excessive deformation is taking place during our cold spray process. So what is happening? We need a powder. There's a small temperature just to, you know, evaporate uh, moisture and other things. And then there is uh, air pressure is too high with a D-lava nozzle is there, right? So D-lava means we, are, we go a, a supersonic speed, right? More than the speed of sound and about uh, three Mach number, right? Can be used sometime minimum or two to three Mach number. So these particles when hit on the substrate, so excessive plastic deformation is there. One layer is formed, second layer is formed, third layer is formed. So what we said, that is this uh, product is developed in the form of layer by layer. So it is qualified as our additive manufacturing concept. And the advantage, or you can say compare with the thermal spray and cold spray. In a thermal spray, we have thermal stays with the particle, means a solid, uh, solidification is there, shrinkage issues are there, right? But there, they have a different advantage. We can use a tungsten carbide or other ceramic powder easily, right? Here, the advantage is that we maintain the, uh, whatever the, the property of the powder at initial state. We are not losing any uh, properties after coating. So there is no, you can say the thermalistry associated, only plastic deformation is there, which can easily, you can say, handle. So that is the advantage of our cold spread process. So what uh, we have written here, it is the same, no thermally induced difference in the power versus coating and almost the same, but a, a good addition can be achieved because of very, very high, you can say. And there's a restriction that those materials which have a good ductility can only be used. Otherwise, it's a, or we will have to make it some matrix to uh, add it on the substrate. How the uh, addition is taking place in our cold spray, which is governed by simple critical velocity here. And this graph just give us idea what should be the velocity of particle before waiting. Either this particle is enough to substrate on it or it may rebound it or it may pass on. So what will happen, let us say, if I have a, uh, let us simple a board is there and fire a gun from here. So what will happen? It pass through it. Let us say if a, a simple small ball is there, what will happen? It 
strike and rebound it. If it is a water balloon is there, strike over here, it is splash out here, right? And water stick remain, whatever uh, absorb here, rest it falls down in the droplet. Three condition can be possible. Similarly here for the metal particle, when they are striking over the substrate, maybe no deposition is there, deposition is taking place here and possible erosion is there. Either it can take away the material or maybe pass through, that is a steam condition, right? Just like a bullet gun, when you fired it, it passes through, uh, through the uh, material. So either it eroded, it carry away some material with that. So in this uh, analysis, what we did, just a simple, you can say how you can go in, how we can look and how we can uh, do some uh, latest research from where we can start. Let us say material selection is there, right? So we have taken here copper, aluminum, and titanium. Second substrate is there. Again, we have taken copper, aluminum, and titanium with a different particle size, with a different particle velocities are there. So we can do whatever the analysis which has shown in this figure through uh, to look at a critical velocity, right? For the deposition and how much deposition efficiency we can find it out and how we can use it this practically successful cold display process for different powders on different substrate. It can be seen by this simple software analysis is there where three conditions have been taken and a very simple model. Again, we are using a standard one, Johnson Cook plasticity model, which is used for excessive plastic deformation or excessive damage is there. And where we have taken the damage parameter omega, which is more than one, then there is a deposition is there. If it is less than that, then it may be rebound is there. And here, with the standard, you can say the equation of this, uh, it can be A, B, and C, and the other material related constant are there. And yield step, work hardening parameters, dimensional acid strain rate parameters can be. So this is temperature, right? And where my E, right? This is uh, excessive plastic strain is there, right? Which is equivalent plastic strain can be used. On the basis of that, we can find our damage parameter and this damage parameter is more than one means. So that is a Johnson Cook plasticity model, which is a standard is used. So how the addition is taking place? That is oxide, right? Once the metal strike, right? Or you can say equivalent plastic strain is almost zero. Oxide layers are there. There is no, no, you can say the bond of the material is taking place. There is no, you can say a metallic bond or even a, you can say a simple bond is there because oxide layers are there. So they are separate from each other, right? Whereas it is greater than this, then the plastic surfaces, uh, you can say, excessively deform and a starting of metallic deformation is taking place. And here, if we look at this figure, the third condition means excessive plastic strain and damage is occurred, right? What is happening? This voids reducing because material is deformed plastically as standard or moved in the direction, in both direction, right? And this is joining is taking place, right? And it is moving further, this area is reducing, so complete metallic bond can be achieved, right? So one, right, and second, let us say, can be developed. So, this can be, seen easily here, right? So if we go through that with the abacus models taking place and a condition one is my, uh, this is can say a particle, right? Which is, sorry, particle is there. That is my substrate is there. So how 
plastic deformation is taking place, either it is excessive or rebound, whatever the condition is there, right? And for this, we have seen with the present work, means uh, that a student uh, did the simulation compared with uh, one as standard, you can say who did a lot of work in this area by Lee and we almost compare it and we got through simulation, same results are there. So once my model is perfect, my model is uh, free from element, free from my size, right? Then we go or look at, you can say the, uh, you can say uh, compression ratio is there, right? dp minus dh upon dp means uh, what is the diameter of the particle minus the, the particle after you can say hemisphere or after uh, you can say uh, attach on the substrate and the diameter of the particle is there. So that is greater than and that is definitely less than. That is the one way to find it out. Second is a flattening ratio is there, the diameter which is a spreading dia means that you now that is a dia and a diameter of our particle, this one, right? So this is a flattening ratio by which we can find it out. In this case, we have taken the, uh, you can say the diameter, it is this one, right? The height one. So with the help of these two way, uh, ways, we can find it out a different condition and look at how our excessive plastic deformation has taken place, what are the conditions, we can find it out the process and use it for practical application or experimental condition is there, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a condition is, let us say, five, uh, 300, sorry, 400, uh, 500, 600, 700 meter per speed. So the speed of the particles is increasing and we have taken at 35 nanosecond time to be taken. So all conditions are same, only the velocity increases. So this is very less velocity. This is 400, this is uh, 500. You will see as we increase the velocity, so kinetic energy of the material, right? The particle is increases and excessive deformation we have seen here, right? This is a maximum, so how much effect we will look at there. Similarly, speed and compression ratio, what the quality by which we are monitoring this process, this is speed with a flattening ratio. As we increase the speed, our compression ratio as well as the flattening ratio is increased, means excessive plastic deformation is increased. On the other condition here, titanium particle, right? At different velocities. My, this one is, let us say, aluminum is there, right? So what is happening means titanium is hard than the aluminum. So it, uh, you can say inserted inside it. And when we increase the velocity, if you look at the particle inserted more in our substrate is there. So what type of condition we require? In our, uh, let us say, when we are talking about uh, cold spray for additive manufacturing, the layer by layer. So it should be flat and our particles and all the same time they are getting the uh, metallic bond and coming over each other. This condition uh, does not uh, suit us for, for a deposition technique. And here we can look at a compression ratio, flattening ratio. With this, you can say a cross section of our substrate and particle is there. Similarly, aluminum particle on titanium. So aluminum particle is soft, right? Whereas uh, my this, this is a uh, titanium is there. That is you can say harder than this. So what is happening? So it has excessive plastic deformation is there, or it is spread more over the substrate is there. And if you see, if more, you can say it is spread, now it will come out. So there is a gap is increasing. So again, uh, practically if gap is there, what we need it, it should be a uniformly spreaded over the substrate. If it is there, right? then there is a chances of uh, rust is there, maybe the uh, ox oxides are present and may cause to uh, failure of our material there. So it should be a complete one, right? Let us say like this. So this we have also seen that when we increase a more energy, then it will become more flattened and become a cone-like structure is there. 
And this can be seen again with a flattening ratio and a compression ratio of the material. And how it can be used with these different applications that we have seen. Um, if you look at here, right, corroded site on magnesium flange, which is used in the in aerospace industry, and it is get back to its uh, original shape with the same dimension, repeat the cold spray of aluminum powder. So that is a cold spray is used for additive manufacturing to deposit the material in such a way to get the same dimension. So this is before, right? There is a, you know, so, uh, on the, the major application of a thermal spray process, there are two options is there. This flange should be replaced, right? Because it's damaged, but only the surface is damaged. What, what can we do it? We just repair it or we have to replace it. Repairing cost is minimum and we are getting the same material. We are getting the same dimensions rather than we have to replace it. So that is why thermal spray process or cold spray process is mostly used for the repair to get the component, right? And fix it with even an odd condition. Nowadays, even in a normal condition also. Before it was when there was no options available. Okay, we can make it part. Let us say a ship is there in a, in a deep sea and some issues were there. How we can, uh, because of, we can't put uh, all the components in the ship for repair. So better we put a cold spray and our uh, this uh, uh, thermal spray equipment are there and the material which commonly used there is small amount. So one material may be a fracture, may be failed, may be wear out. We just take it a scan, put it, produce it and put it back as a functional component or repair it just like this if it is eroded or wear out. Put it back, we are again our machine in use. So that is the major advantage. That is the one of the quality of this uh, type of the process in our uh, manufacturing is there. Similarly, a pure copper coating on a steel substrate. Before that, it was, uh, let us say, this is my steel is there. So uh, some copper coating is used for a good conductivity, either by adhesive or by simply, uh, you can say, apply the pressure. But after some time of continuously use, it may lose and this strip is taken out. But when we are using uh, additive manufactured uh, through cold spray, this copper, strip, it has a maximum strength compared to any other process. Similarly, other examples are there. This component can be made at this, right? This broken down, it is replace it with the cold spray, then get the dimension of this one to use it directly, right? Similarly, we have other, you can say, um, uh, aluminium, this part is damaged, right? Or we want to add it as uh, some component here over there. So by any other process, it's not possible. Then we uh, they did a cold spray process. And after that, get machine, get the dimension or the support part is there, which can be done by here. So this is uh, cold spray advantage that it has no heat affected zone as well as it retained the crystallity of the powder or you can say raw material and give a maximum mechanical properties what it was before the you can say uh, thermal spray. So that is the real advantage there and there is a small So if I can, uh, simulation is there, right? Here, uh, a student use different powders size because uh, normally uh, what we studied right now, a different uh, size of the powder and the powder size is fixed, right? Whatever we have taken. But when we are using really a powder, it has a powder distribution, right? So it is not a one size of powder. Maybe it is a, 
uh, different distribution grades are there. So how it, if we use it, we can even simulate it. And you will see how the excessive plastic deformation is going or taking place during the process of layer by layer. So we can optimize this process with So with this uh, software technique, we did this uh, cold spray optimization, right? Very well and analyze and optimize before we can apply in our real life. So thank you very much. So do you have any query? Sprint cover. Yes, uh, thank you very much, sir. Dear participants, uh, please, uh, if you have any query, you can ask to sir. Participant, please. You can unmute yourself for the queries. No. No query. Yes. And uh, one query, sir. Uh, Mohit Benewal is sir writing in the chat box. Sir, nice presentation. Do you come across any case study for designing shoes, oblique braces for club food cases found in babies at times of birth? Sir, please unmute your mic, please. Right, yeah. For the shoes, right, just like uh, we have a Nike and we have Adidas and all these, they, they were doing very extensive research before launching a new type of product. And whatever we have seen today's development in our sports shoe because of their uh, research, they did. Nowadays, things are very open. Now it is available. Why the cost of 5,000, 6,000, even in the past 20 years back, the cost of shoes is more than 2,000, 3,000 because of this. That is why you have seen also there is a doctor sole shoe is there. There, which define the plantar uh, pressure as well as support to it, which is a uh, you can say shape memory. Uh, this uh, higher molecular polymers are used, uh, which has a specific uh, polymer. Right, it can work within the human range, means uh, 30 to 37 or 40 degree. It will get the shape at a 60 degree. Right, which is uh, acceptable to human for uh, some time or one or two minute. And if it is a temperature move down below than 20 degree, then it will retain the original shape. So shape memory polymers are also used, right? For a doctor shoe, that is a common or commercial name is available. So extensive work is there, but still a large scope is there where a customized product is there, even in the shoe, right? or a good sportsman or the national or international sports people are there. They design their customized shoes are there. According to their, uh, you can say the sole design or the sole shape of the sports person, especially those who are involved in running. And about for uh, this uh, baby, this, I, I have no idea about that. I think Mohit got the answer. <clears throat> Yes, any participants, if you have any query. Okay. So, thank you very much, sir, for such a inspiring and informative talks on the role of 3D printing in the medical fields and the role of thermal spray coating in additive manufacturing. A very simple and interesting way you of your teaching, sir, really made this session a wonderful. Thank you very much, sir for making this session a memorable for us. And I believe your talks and the method you suggested will benefit the participants. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh,
Thanks, sir. I think. Sir. Okay, okay. Yes, participants, uh, there is an announcement for tomorrow. Wait a minute, please. Dear participants, uh, there will be a test uh, for tomorrow at 11.30. That is related to this uh, uh, subject of this FDP, that is 3D printing and design. So, because this is a compulsory test, so we'll take this test at 11.30 to 12. And it is a compulsory for, uh, as we know that the, there is a rule for this uh, adult FDP. So this is a compulsory test for the certificates, you can say. So tomorrow we'll have a test at 11.30. So please join accordingly. And uh, the morning start, uh, the ses morning session will start as per the schedule. So there is a, uh, will be two lectures in the morning session. And after that, we have the validatory functions. So we'll meet accordingly tomorrow at the 9.30 a.m. sharp. So thank you very much. Thanks sir, a lot. Sir, a query. Yes, sir. 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 Hey, skip no, no, sir, skip, no, skip I will adjust that lecture for half an hour. Okay, this means after the test? Yeah, definitely. The lecture will be there, uh, but the test is around uh, 11.30 to 12. After that, the, uh, the same lecture will be there. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, can we leave? Yes, Dr. Puneet Royla, you can leave. Thank you, sir. We'll join tomorrow at 9.30. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. okay.